Kardashian is asking for compassion and empathy for her husband, Grammy award-winning uh, rapper and entrepreneur, Kanye West. From announcing his run for the presidency and a rally to making satanic claims about a COVID vaccine, some of his recent behavior had certainly raised some questions about his mental health. Kim took to Instagram stories yesterday to remind fans that West has bipolar disorder, a lifelong mental health condition that causes extreme emotional highs and lows. So we want to bring in Julie Fast. Uh, Julie, you're the author of Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder as well as Take Charge of Bipolar Disorder. Um, not only are you a mental health expert, but this is a very personal journey for you as well because you were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I want to get into your excellent uh, Psychology Today um, article on Kanye, but I also want to start with what's the journey been like for you? Well, good morning. Well, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1995, but I had symptoms for 15 years before that. So I had hmm. bipolar symptoms from age 16 to 31, and I was finally diagnosed, and then eventually diagnosed with a psychotic disorder also. So my actual diagnosis is called schizoaffective disorder. Schizo means psychosis, affective means mood. And unbelievably, I was in a 10-year relationship with a partner who has bipolar disorder one. So I, I call myself the bipolar magnet. I have almost 40 years of experience of bipolar disorder. So I know what Kim and Kanye are going through. Mm. So in your recent article for Psychology Today, you do help readers understand why Kanye West is not just a grandiose, attention-seeking rapper. Um, what are some of the signs that this is not just his rap persona, but that he is having a manic episode? Are you able to tell by, you know, I mean, we only see snippets of him, and we don't see him every day in his daily life. This is just one moment that was captured on camera. Um, are you able to tell that he's having a kind of a manic episode just by watching that? Oh, yes. In fact, the bipolar community has been very aware of Kanye because he's spoken so openly about having bipolar disorder, especially to David Letterman. So honestly, there is an enormous difference between the grag grand you know, grandiose, braggadocio, I'm the best in the rap world. You just put up a picture of Kanye and what happened with Taylor Swift. That's an example of when a mood swing gets out of control. And there's often a lot of regret Whereas when you're a rapper, my favorite rapper, Chuck D, I'm big into Eminem, those guys are educating while they're telling you they're, they're the, that they're the best. Whereas what Kanye gets into outside of his rap career, it makes no sense. It's shocking, but not shocking in a good way. It's not shocking in a way like, hey, that's cool. He's done something new. Instead, I call it sort of a head jerk moment. He did what? And that's the difference between the manic, psychotic, bizarre, grandiose behavior that is extremely common in bipolar disorder versus what I love about the rap persona. Also, now Kanye's crying. What you have to know about bipolar is what goes up. I'm the greatest. I'm going to run for president on the Wakanda movement and the birthday party. He's now crying and talking about very personal things that normally he would never talk about especially in front of a news crew. And that's the difference between the grandiose rapper and somebody who's a great rapper but has bipolar disorder. Hmm. Yeah, and you point out in your psychology today, you, you talk about a time where he was sort of caught on a hot mic where he seems to be, you know, talking about how amazing he is, how he's greater than all these people. But you kind of describe it as like a word salad. It's sort of difficult to follow. It's not the same as other times when we've heard him brag about his creativity and all that sort of thing. Um, and so speaking of other times, there have been other times where he, we've seen him sort of you know, kind of appear like his behavior is is different. But this seems to be larger, more drawn out. We had this campaign rally, if you want to call it, and, and this Twitter rant over the past few days. Um, why do you think this is seems to be bigger? And is this sort of part of the cycle? If it, if it goes unchecked, can get sort of broader and bigger? First of all, it's 100 percent part of the cycle. You talk to any partner or family member, who loves someone with untreated bipolar disorder, especially the kind Kanye has, which is called bipolar one. This is totally normal. That's why everybody understands what Kim wrote and pretty much everybody in the psych community says, yep, he's manic and psychotic. But what you'll notice is when we're manic, I call us pied pipers. 
people will follow us. So Kanye will be able to leave the family that's trying to take care of him and go find all new people who think that's just Kanye being Kanye. He's just a genius. Let's just let him do his thing. We're going to get on his coattails. Then the crying starts. Then the bizarreness starts. Then the suicidal ideation starts because what goes up must come down. So we really do attract people when we're in this mood swing until it gets too strong for even them. And that's when the family has to step in and get them help again. Mm. Uh, what, you know, Emery and I were talking about this, uh, or at least texting about this. Uh, Kim Kardashian stressed living with bipolar disorder does not diminish her husband's dreams, his creativity, his creative ideas. Um, can, I, my guess is that, and I don't know anything about this, uh, which is why I'm so happy that we're able to talk to you. Um, can uh, an individual be creative uh, and stable uh, when they are facing an episode like this? What happens to the creativity um, during an episode? Let's and not Julie, just to add to that, oh, Kanye yes, has, has said, Kanye has said that, at least I've, I've read reports where he has said that his concern about taking medication for this disorder is that it would diminish his creativity. So can you sort of address right. both of that, like the creativity when you're in this state, but also the concern that medication will take all of that magic away? It is not fair that somebody who has experienced mania, which is unlike anything else you've ever experienced in your life, you, your frontal lobes are off. So you're all animal creativity, animal sexuality. You'll speak your mind. It feels super creative. But once it goes too far, it's destructive. You have to find the balance between your creative genius and so many people with bipolar disorder are hyper intelligent. It's just part of having bipolar disorder. We're not necessarily more creative than other people. We're actually really more creative when we're manic. But people are more creative when they're on cocaine or on ADD meds. So it doesn't mean that it's a positive, this creativity that happens with mania. I've had to teach myself how to be creative when not manic. And it's taken me many, many years because mania almost killed me. I would put myself in dangerous situations and then I'd get suicidal and I finally had to stop it. Is it as exciting as the creativity of mania? Absolutely not. But our friends and family hate our mania. Only we like it. So if we want to be stable, we have to find a way to be creative or genius, as Kim calls Kanye, in a stable environment. And it is absolutely possible. I don't write my books when I'm manic. I think about them and outline them and think how amazing they are. But I write them when I'm stable or often depressed. It doesn't feel good to be creative when you're not manic. But you can learn to do it. Yes. Uh, Julie, all great information. I wish we could talk to you longer. Uh, many people uh, are finding themselves um, feeling pressure because of this pandemic, um, particularly mental health concerns. We've talked about a lot. And I imagine if you're already predisposed to having an episode, this current environment is not going to oh, help. Yes. Um, but we're running out of time with you. So hopefully we can touch base with you again. Thanks, Julie. Thank you very much.